Well, welcome back to exercise four and let's start grading. We now have our timeline set up. Let's come down to our color tab down here. So this is the place where all the action happens. So we've got our up top. Let's have a look through the UI first. So we've got our viewer up here and this is going to be useful, not just for, for previewing how our timeline and grade looks, but also for taking a look when we start looking at uh, windows and qualifiers, you know, basically second secondary uh, color correction. There's going to be a whole load of stuff that we're going to be doing in the viewer up here. Uh, just as a at the top, we can see the project name and the session name. We can also see the clip time code up here as well. And down the bottom, we can see the timeline time code down there. And we can set this to just loop a particular area. And we can use the, the regular sort of VTR controls down here. Now, if we now if we start playing these things through, we can also see up the top we have our speed that everything's playing back at, which is only at the moment 11 frames per second, and the GPU usage that's happening here as well. Now, I should warn you, the screen capture software is taking up uh, a fair bit of uh, resources, so it is reducing this down a little bit more than it should do. So we hit zoom to fit. We should be able to get that going in. We do have, you know, an elastic windows coming in here as well. Now Resolve is designed for a one monitor setup. Uh, if you do have two monitors, that is useful if you, uh, well, let's right click on our viewer here. And at the bottom we have our waveform options so we can start bringing in the waveform monitors, which we'll be looking at uh, soon. Uh, so the, the second monitor is useful for, for storing these away. Absolutely. Cool, then coming over to the right, let's uh, bring that in there. Uh, coming over to the right here, we have our still store and our power grade uh, and also our memory buttons down here. We will be exploring these in uh, future sessions. Incredibly important, incredibly useful. And moving over to the top right, we have our node graph. So this is where the magic happens. So instead of having rooms as we do in Apple Color, we have nodes. And the, uh, one way of thinking of nodes is to, to think of the way that uh, a stream uh, goes down. So we have the source of the stream, our input here. So this is our main original clip. And it follows the line of this node down into our first node. And whatever we do with this node, whatever color correction effects we put on this first node, it will then move that down, downstream to our output here. So let's say, for example, let's not look too much what I'm doing here. Uh, let's just add a very, very visible tint on this first node here. And I'm gonna add another node. And I'm gonna add another node afterwards. You can see that the input from on this second node is coming directly from this part of the stream here. So if I was to do something to try and counteract that first node, I can do that. And then the sum of both of those corrections will then feed into our output. But if I turn off my first node here, I only see the corrections that have been done on the second node. So the secondary node is very, very blue. The first node is yellow. And between the two of them, they cancel each other out. So it's a way of putting multiple effects on a single clip in, in much the same way that in uh, color, we could use the primary in and the secondaries. And we have the eight secondaries there to be able to apply multiple effects to, to a single clip. Here, we don't do that. Um, there is no sort of distinction between primary and secondary nodes. They're just, they're just transformations, they're just nodes. And as we progress through this course, we'll be seeing the importance of these nodes uh, more and more. And it really is a very, very flexible and powerful way